along with his group, worked in with the Australians, found this really clean list, and this might be the ticket because he's sitting at 25 match points. If you can reach out to as many players as possible in the community, like the data that you're able to gather based on tech cards and matchups and percentages just becomes exponential. And you love to see not only the players knowing what they like to play and being confident, but just understanding that it's impossible to know absolutely everything about such a complex game with so many different factors at play and just reaching out to your comrades and your peers to get that additional feedback and making sure that you are playing as efficiently as possible. Yep, Azul is also in a, in a similar position. His testing group is arguably one of the strongest that we've ever seen. So many regional champions, nationals, top cuts, world champion top cuts. We, it's, it, the list goes on and on and he is also arguably one of the best players in that group with five regional wins of his own, looking to add on an additional accomplishment here at the North American International Championships. A very storied player looking to just pad his resume a bit, and I'm really looking forward to seeing if that very strong showing from day one can continue for Azul, or if John Ang, trusting in the power of Palkia V-Star, who some say is the newest best deck in the format, is able to continue its onslaught especially against what is considered to be its direct counter with the Flying Pikachu. <laughs> That's right. This is going to be a, an epic match. Azul definitely thinking that he's got the upper hand, but John is going to be a tough competitor to face off against here with the Palkia build. Yeah, starting off with the Sobble. It, at the very least, Azul has that Arceus set up turn one so you can get that energy attachment, but we've seen this before. The double Palkia start means that even if you get set up, John Ang has the potential to come out of the gate swinging with two massive attackers I, right from the get-go. I think the Dark Cloud is here. That hand is going nowhere. There's a quick ball. There's there's scoop up net, cross switcher, training court. There's, there's a Melanie, but there's no water energies. This whole deck has to accelerate with the, with the water energy. The capacious bucket is what makes this deck fly. There is no Crobat in a list like this. You have to have the water energies to start moving through your deck, or at least the evolution incense for the Drizzile on the following turn. We see neither. If this start ends up being too slow and Azul is able to set up that flying Pikachu, John Ang is going to get completely shut out of this game. We've seen it from time to time with even a powerful Arceus setup. If you miss your other main attacker for him to accelerate the energies too, um, the game could go completely in John Ang's favor. So right now, even at the opening of the game, we're at this massive fork in the road, Kyle. There is some hope for John. This does look like a strong start, and you don't necessarily need to show water energies to, to show strength against Azul. And Azul's deck is known for one thing and one thing only, besides lightning energies. <laughs> it, it's known for Path Marnie. It, Azul could certainly open a game with a Marnie, thinking that John has a hand with strength, and maybe give John a fresh start. But he's going to be relying on the top of his deck for quite some time if he doesn't figure it out soon. Yeah, even in his winner's interview from day one, Azul was saying that this is a Path Marnie deck. He's very, uh, just so strong at recognizing the situations where the Marnie is going to shut down the opponent. We know that these Inteleon decks from time to time, you play the Drizzile, you cycle a couple of them, and you're just signaling to your opponent that you're preparing for some big play the next turn. And Azul could very easily disrupt that with a key Marnie. Now, finally, taking a look through the deck with the Evolution Incense, going to take a deep look here. Azul always very cognizant of what is going to be prized. Yep, this is a great way to start the, the opening turn for yourself. Just use the Evolution Incense. Not necessarily going to be grabbing anything. You're not evolving on the opening turn. But we saw the Professor's Research in hand. So Azul likely going to be leaning towards that. Uh, we did see some other supporters in hand as well, like a boss's orders, but uh, you got to go for a little more aggression here. Try to push. Maybe you can find that double turbo energy and a flying Pikachu to get mm -hmm. the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. These Arceus decks are always trying to straddle the line between utility and aggression. Oh, and there was a Marnie in that hand. 
This is so devastating. You always hate to discard so many cards with Professor's Research. And now with seven fresh cards, can Azul make something happen with this instead? It's all, oh no. This is beautiful. Azul has the double turbo energy, but I think he Is only that all has, you need? I think he's got the uh, only the Arceus as the, uh, the Pokemon that he could charge That's up. That's what I mean. Not it, necessarily with, what you want to go for, we, but uh, five, I, I don't five think energies is good. Five energy? I, I feel like he needs a little bit more than this, though, Kyle. Having the Arceus is great, but when you're sitting across the table to two Palkia of V, I suppose without an energy attachment, John Ang might be a couple turns behind. Path of the Peak comes down, start, uh, taking off that abyss, that, that uh, pardon me, the Star Portal. Yeah, I, I think this might be enough, honestly. Uh, we, we, you see the, the, the Marnie discard from Azul, understanding three card hands. Uh, uh, John might just be dead in the water here, right here, right now. I push for aggression, found the double turbo energy, now gets to start charging up the Arceus. I think we also saw a Sharon's Care in the hand, too. So if there were any aggression from John, certainly you'd think that Azul would have a backup plan with this follow-up Arceus. So Azul has managed to stabilize Arceus V now charged up on the bench, and this means that when this one in the active happens to go down, if at all, we'll at least have something else to pivot to. So Azul right now threatening to snowball this game immensely. John Ang now with a pretty weak setup at the moment, needs to find a way. Oh, just, oh no, Kyle yeah. just passes back. His no way to fight out of this position because he said no water energy, no utility. Yeah, his top deck was the cross switcher. So he has both of them. That's really good if you're four turns in and already have a full setup. That's not where we're at. This is going to be bad. Azul with the evolution and sense. You already know what that means. Arceus V-Star is going to be hitting the board, and that means knockouts are going to start flying left and right. John is on the clock. And because Azul is so confident in his setup, he's already put down the path to the peak. Doesn't need that star birth just yet because the rest of the hand is so good. And you know when you put down that path to the peak, you just want your opponent to jump through some hoops in order to bump it, get it out of the way. And if uh, John Ang has to use a Drizzile to search out that stadium, you know, that's all the better for you. Don't know if we saw an energy in the hand, but we did see boss's orders. That's a, a nice way to maybe limit John, from any top decks, if you're able to knock out this opening Sobble here and then you follow up with a boss's order on the second Sobble, then no Drizzile top deck is live and you're basically just going to run through these Origin Form Palkia Vs for the rest of the, your prize cards. There's the evolution. The setup of second Professor's Research. Azul set this up from the last turn. Seven more fresh cards off the top. Yeah, looking for Ultra Ball or the Flying Pikachu. Finds the Quick Ball, that'll do it as well. Flying Pikachu is a fantastic way to basically seal the deal here. No aggression right now from John. And if you get that Flying Pikachu V Max, it's all but sealed up. There's way too many hit points for a Palkia V when you play a limited bench like this. Limit your bench, hit for that Lightning Weakness. That's exactly what Azul was looking for for this matchup. Targeting the, Pal the Palkia V is the only thing that he's been focused on this entire time. When a deck that's this strong dro drops into the metagame, you know that so many players are going to bring it, and Azul has their number. Yeah, we saw Azul go with a, a, a neat line. He went ahead and evolved the back Arceus V-Star. He just didn't want to play into any potential way of not being able to attack. Even though he did find an energy card, this just makes a lot of sense. He was willing to retreat with the double turbo if he had to. Instead, finds the switch and now has upwards of eight energies on this board right now. And uh, that is going to be a lot to ask of John to clean up. This is the nightmare scenario that we were afraid was going to happen to John. Ooh. The Arceus was able to set up the next attacker, and by taking the knockout on that Sobble, that's one less potential Drizzile to make use of. Well, John found the arguably best card for him, the top deck Drizzile on the very last turn, likely, for this Sobble. But what do you get? <laughs> you search through the Drizzile, Evolution incense. It doesn't matter. The Palkia V star, even if you get that evolution, there's no energy attachment. So you can't get a subspace swell. Try to get that chip damage through. The path to the peak is still there. Irida. Natalie said it last time that Irida can fix any bad hand. You can look through your deck for a water po Pokemon and an item card. So this is your knockoff star birth here. <laughs> Yeah, this, this would fix any bad hand if you had time. 
This is where mm -hmm. the original mm -hmm. list that they played previously had an answer in going for that professor's research and they would go very aggressive, just try to draw as many cards as you can, because right now, you're asking a lot of your deck. This has to be training court, concealed cards, start drawing into the perfect one or two card combo here. Maybe you can get a, uh, an origin form Palkia of V-Star attacking, but even then, you want to knock out this, this flying Pikachu V right now, and that requires a little more bench. Two cards from... Ooh. Oh, okay, it's Double coming Palkia together. Double V-Star, but... Is there enough Pokemon? There's so much energy in play, you can't even go for the cross switch or try to strand something. Everything has retreat. Yeah, this might just be a little too slow. We're, we're looking at 160 damage. A choice belt would have been exactly enough. But yet just has to go ahead and work in this chip damage right now onto the Flying Pikachu V. Understands that there's just no real comeback mechanism against 310 hit points. You have to work in this damage now. He has the Melanie for the follow-up with the Palkia V-Star on the bench after this one is likely knocked out. But going to be down so many prize cards from that point. Especially after taking that first one from the Sobel, Azul is ahead. Does John have the Roxanne? In the deck, yes. I'd have to double check. The Roxanne <laughs> is just so good. Sometimes aggressive decks, they're so concerned with being ahead and ending the games quickly, they don't really think to include techs like that. But it has proven so strong, I'd have to double check and see if there's one or two in there. No, you're right. Yeah, this is, uh, this is playing none. It does have the one Marnie as okay. the only real way to do any shuffle disruption. But yeah, if, you're, uh, if you plan on winning, <laughs> why, why have a backup plan, I suppose? And so this is everything going wrong for John Eng, hitting this electric attacker, not having that potential bailout of Roxanne. We've seen it so many times, especially from day one, that when you do fall behind, sometimes you can strand your opponent for one or two turns and just give yourself some breathing room to claw back into the game. But now as things head back over to Azul, the pieces are coming back together. Another Path of the Peak being prepared and a flying Pikachu VMAX also being snagged. Now that Path of the Peak is not there, the Starbirth is going to find exactly what Azul needs to solidify his position in this game. Yeah, this is all about slowly but surely making sure you close out all of these additional percentiles right now. Make sure you get that big attack into the origin form Palkia V-Star with your Flying Pikachu V-Max and then close out with the Path to the Peak so that you don't have to worry about Star Portal on the following turn. It really just leaves that John's one card hand has to be uh, a Melanie. Sure enough, we know that is the card on the other side. Whenever <laughs> these Drizzile decks fall behind, they do have that very, very small potential to find the cards they need, put together these combinations, and still make things happen. But again, Azul, the deck is doing exactly what it's supposed to do in the matchup that you're looking for. And John Ang has just been fighting an uphill battle ever since the first turn of the game. Second flying Pikachu now hitting the bench, just having a neck, another attacker. This is how this list performs. You always have consistent attacking Pokemon set up and prepped, ready to go to keep that continuous pressure. Palkia V-Star goes down, Azul taking two more prizes. Now with only three remaining and John Ang on no Roxanne. The, the next card was the choice belt. Everything's coming together, Kyle, I tell he, you. He was he was one card away from knocking out the flying Pikachu V on the last turn. Finding more cards, Evolution Incense, another path. Oh no, yeah. Scoops it up. Gonna go to game two, John Ang recognizing there's no way to fight against an opening that strong, Azul stabilizing, and just having so many electric attackers ready to go. Palkia had nowhere to run. Yeah, that was not the ideal setup from John, and I'm sure he'd be the first one to tell you that. He saw a lot of Pokemon, but honestly, if you don't have the water energies to back it up, that is the real engine of this deck. We saw Natalie Miller going with the eight water energies, a way mm -hmm. to uh, potentially shore that up toward Reckliff also working in with the four capacious bucket that we saw last week and that's starting to, to be a trend that we see it's understanding that these are my outs my win conditions if I get an early setup I'm going to find a way to, mm -hmm. to stay competitive in every game and John almost found a way in that game even with everything going wrong this is ironically one of the flaws of playing such a powerful deck 
because it hasn't been as efficiently optimized through hours and hours of play the way some of these other lists have. And you miss out on these very minuscule innovations. Changing out one or two cards can heavily affect the way your list plays out. And we're seeing it rear its ugly head here. If you don't have that starting energy card, the game just runs away with you. Yeah, we see John is on the three capacious bucket and seven water energy, which is Honestly, fairly standard, and uh, with all of the cards that he's trying to include, he's got maybe some... A mulligan. Yeah, that's not going to work for you. But that does have a, a couple sneaky options there. We saw the Tool Scrapper. That's something that has started to be an inclusion. Uh, for the Mirror Match, it's, it's beneficial. Maybe you get rid of mm -hmm. that Tool Jammer on the other side, and you get to work in a nice sneaky knockout uh, against another Palkia V-Star. It's games like this that actually make the decks a, a little bit better in the long run. When a, when a deck is just winning, taking down tournaments, you're doing well with it in your pocket of the sample size in a tournament. You're like, okay, this is fine. This, uh, this 60 cards is optimal and great. But then as you play over and over, you start to see the cracks begin to show. And this is where the optimizations begin to happen. But John Eng just has to trust that the raw power of Palkia V-Star can show up for him here in game number two. Well, we are off to start <laughs> game kaboom. two. And uh, both players are regretting every choice they've ever made to lead to this point because uh, the Palkia V pass is awful and stampeding Pumpkaboo is also not going to get you over the line. I think Azul has a little more playability in his hand, however. Already from the start of the game, there's just so much balled up energy. It's like a rubber band about to snap one side or the other can just get some monstrous setup and keep the other one from truly participating in the game. With Pumpkaboo in the active, if John Eng is too slow to knock this out, Azul could just have a lot of attackers just set up on the bench and ready to go at the very least. This is an odd mirror to what we saw at the start of the first game, though, Ooh, where... Ooh, capture energy. So nice Nice. Here. Nice bailout. Capture energy allowing you to pick that basic Pokemon, put it onto the bench, gets the flying Pikachu V. This is much faster than we saw in, even in game one. So now John Ang is under immediate threat of that lightning attack. Yeah, this is this is ideal. Getting the uh, the opening flying Pikachu V means that you're going to find your V Max even earlier, and if you can get that down before it's threatened by a Palkia knockout, that uh, you're in the exact place you need to be. Uh, getting the, that opening charge onto the flying Pikachu is something that we didn't see in game one. If we saw that, I'm sure we would have ended even sooner. And there's a pass back, John Ang. Now, oh, why? No. Battle VIP pass. That is not okay. <laughs> he plays four of them, and all of them are dead cards from this point forward. And of course, his deck says, here you go, buddy. I know what you're missing. You want some basic Pokemon. Yep, Marnie comes through, and Azul, you can see, has done such a good job just bent limiting the bench. Um, I remember back, we you know, with Suicune was threatening everyone, and players were running Avery, a collapsed stadium to try to combat it. And restricting your opponent's bench gives you a lot more room to also restrict their utility. But Azul is very comfortable from this position. Doesn't care about uh, limiting the bench and limiting the damage of that subspace swell. But John Ang still struggling to put something together here. Yeah, John would like to play 12 Pokemon on the bench if he could, and he's managed to find one. He's finding his first Sobble of the game right now with this level ball. The rest of the hand is a little bit slower, and that's honestly just the way the deck is built. He's trying to use Battle VIP Pass on the opening turns. Uh, maybe if going second, you can use that Irida and help yourself out. You fill the bench, and then it's just Irida chains and Melanies from there to just get the extra piece you need each turn to stay in a game. That doesn't work if you don't have a setup, though. John Ang's deck trying to make use of these very powerful, somewhat greedy mechanics. It worked out in day one. He's 8-0 in one, but now into day two, the variance is catching up with this man. Well, as my dear friend Kenny Wisdom would say, an embarrassment of riches on the other side for Azul GG because he's got both his V-Star and V-Max roaring to go. Starbirth a potentially online, and uh, this... This gets dangerous. <laughs> Just 
looking through the entire deck, memorizing the prizes, taking advantage of every single possible line that you have access to from this position. It's looking great. We thought that Azul might be off to a slower start with that Pump Kaboo start, but it's just chilling there. A little mascot that's just holding the fort down, keeping the active spot warm until that flying Pikachu VMAX is ready to ascend and start taking those knockouts. Bidoof also finding its place on the bench. The Bidoof and the uh, Bibarel were prized last game, so Azul is very happy to get access to Industrious Incisors this game. Yeah, Azul really wishing that that switch was and an escape rope because that would have been destructive. Instead, going to have to just put this damage onto the Palkia V, but does thankfully get to load up that flying Pikachu V Max now, and that is quite a threat. Now that it's loaded up, John Ang is completely backed up against a wall with only one Palkia V-Star set up in the active. Nothing to keep it, an aggressive threat in play. Once this, uh, this lightning attacker comes up into the active, it's going to be curtains. Well, Irida's going to try to make some sort of fight out mm -hmm. of this. We always see the classic Capacious Bucket along with the Radiant Greninja. A nice way to get some water energies into the discard pile. Maybe draw into some extra cards, but... Yeah, John is frustrated. You can see him just tossing those cards to the side yeah. as he shuffles his deck. Backed up like this into game two. To have your list perform to an 8-0-1 and oh take no. you to game two. And there is the scoop. Couldn't find anything off of the concealed card's ability. And Azul's flying Pikachu VMAX deck claims another victim. 10 and 0. Oh. <laughs> It was a legendary start for the uh, beginning of NAIC. I think that it was told that Adam Hawkins was the only other player that was able to go 9-0 and the first day of an NAIC, and Azul is now keeping that win streak and pushing it even further. 10-0, and finding the matchup that he was looking for, and everything came up roses for Mr. GG. Yeah, if you've gone 9-0 and at this event, you're having a good day today. Adam Hawkins is also still in the field right now, playing a very interesting deck. So maybe he's going to be able to continue that win streak as well and push even further. But right now is Azul GG's moment. That is mm -hmm. unheard of to be this successful on this stage over and over again. 10 wins against some of the best players in the world and just honestly doing it in, in pretty excellent fashion, just running over John there in less than 20 minutes. In complete control the entire time, just having a full awareness of the lines of play and what exactly the win condition was. Even though the, you know, the Flying Pikachu came down very late in that first game, it didn't matter that you were missing out on that main attacker. You were just enjoying the fact that you had access to that path of the peak, locking your opponent out. And uh, I know that Azul is feeling very good, feeling very confident, especially to start off the day like this. Yeah, he, he got the exact matchup that he wanted, and he also saw the draw that he wanted. His mm -hmm. deck would have probably won a game where John did draw well at that point. It, True. He, he had the strong setup. He found the path at the right time. It would have taken a lot from John, uh, and even uh, when you get uh, your deck working as strongly as it can, he thinks that he has enough to, to come out with a win on the other side is Azul. Mm -hmm. And it is a shame, again, for that variance to kind of catch up with you at the start of the day. But as I said, it is just the start. And that means that John Ang has plenty more chances to really show what Palkia V-Star is capable of. We know that it's a strong deck. We know what it can do. But you know, in any TCG, these sorts of draws happen. And who knows, maybe all of the other Pikachu VMAXs just didn't get seated well enough and John can keep dodging bullets for the rest of day two. I mean, if you told him he was going to be 8-1-1 one one at NAIC, he'd probably say, I'll take that. Yeah, it's, true. Uh, the, the ordering in which it happened is unfortunate. It's going to be something that you mentally have to shake off at yeah. that point, but it's a very strong record. You see those 25 points, you know that you're certainly in contention still. Just got to shake that one off and say, hey, well, at least my resistance is going to be fuego. <laughs> exactly. We've got the, the players just trying to keep their mental sharp, trying to keep focused as they compete. Again, the top 10% of, of a, over 